Okay, so in this video, I want to cover fraction multiplication because, as I said in the previous video, it's necessary to learn before we can do fraction addition and um, subtraction. So I'll show you just quickly how to do fraction multiplication first, and then we'll talk about why it works that way. So um, let's just look at a couple fractions really quick. So what if we had a third and we multiply by... Um, two two fits well the way fraction multiplication works is you know you're gonna have some resulting fraction which is just one fraction so here we have two being multiplied we're gonna get a resulting fraction where it's a single fraction and what you do is you take the numerators and you multiply them straight across so this would be in our resulting fraction would be one times two in the numerator because you have one and two in the numerator of your other fractions right and then you do the same thing with the denominator. So here you have 3 times 5 because we had 3 times 5 in the separate fractions over here. Then you just simplify that. So you do 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 5 is 15. And we see that the answer to this, so 1 third times 2 fifths is 2 fifteenths. Okay, let's do one more just to drive the point home. So if we had um, 1 half, and would be multiplied by 3 sevenths, well, we draw ourselves a, a single fraction bar, and we do 1 times 3, and then at the bottom you have 2 times 7. Okay, well, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 7 is 14. So 1 half of three sevenths is three fourteenths and notice I said of this is what we're this is what this is saying is like one half of of you know three sevenths is what you're saying so half of three sevenths is three fourteenths so this is like saying you're taking half of whatever this fraction is or another way you could say is I'm taking three sevenths of one half right <clears throat> that doesn't make sense right now I, uh, I promise I'll go back over that in a second so um, why does it work? So this is how you mechanically do fraction multiplication, but why is it like that? Well, to see that, let's let's look at this real, really quick. So what if I had 1 half times 1 fourth, and now I want to geometrically work this out. So I say geometrically, I mean like use something like a shape that we could actually visualize this with. So um, here we can think about a square and I want to think about a square that is a one whole square right because fractions are talking about parts of a whole so imagine this is a whole square such that you know the length of you know this this length right here is, is one has a measurement of one same thing with this so all sides is a square so all sides have the same measurement they're all one and this square is broken up into fourths. How else can you have a fourth of, of a whole without breaking it up into fourths? So let's break it into fourths so we can cut it in half one way, cut it in half the other way, and we should have four equal parts. And if I have one of those, I have just one of those sort of shaded in here. So that the shading in indicates that it's there. If it's not shaded in, it's consider it being empty. Like it's there was something there, but it's empty right now. It's not possessed by us right now. We only have a fourth of this whole thing. So now I'm multiplying by a half. That's saying I'm doing one half of one fourth, right? Well, what is one half of this fourth? Well, it's, it's, it's easy. It's half of it. So take the thing and you break it in half. I don't know if that color is so easy to see. Maybe can red, will red work better on that? Maybe. So you take the fourth that you did have, you break it into a half. But notice now that it's these two parts now are not the same size as the rest of the squares, right? These squares, so this square and this square and this square are fourths. This one's broken up into something else. It's half of that fourth. So it's kind of hard to see how many of those things I have or what they even are. So what we can do is for the rest of the squares, so actually maybe I'll use white. I think that'll that stands out pretty well. So imagine breaking every one of these squares up the same way, cutting it into 
um, cutting it in half. And then now, right, I only have one of those, so I have half of the fourth, so I'm going to shade, and this is the half of that fourth that we have right here, that one. But how many of those things do we have total now? So they're all cut into equal parts, but how many parts do we have now? We have one, two, three, four. This one out here is five. This one is six, seven. We have eight. So now we have cut this thing into eighths. So this whole square has been cut into eighths. They're equal size. And how many do I have? I have one of them. Well, does that work out with our math? Remember I said, so I, right, I have one eighth. One eighth. Does that work out with the way I told you it worked with the math? Yeah. I said you take the two numerators, you multiply them together in the top, and then you take the two num uh, denominators, you multiply those. So two and four. And we see, well, one times one is one. Two times four is, is eight. So yeah, we, we get the eighth. And that's how it works. So it's it's a strange thing to think of. So maybe this is easier to, to demonstrate first by showing you what happens when you take a whole number multiplied by a fraction. So first let's think about what it meant if we have two times one fourth instead of one half times a fourth. What, what does it mean we have two times one fourth? Well, remember, a, a multiplication is repeat addition. If I say I have two times a fourth, what I'm saying is I have one fourth being added to itself two times. Well, if I have one fourth and I add another fourth, I have two fourths. It's like saying I have one of something and I have another one of those something. How many of those somethings do I have? Two of them. Okay. So that's what it means when you're adding. So, and actually, I got more out at the end, right? So, Two fourths is bigger than one fourth. So I got something bigger at the end when I took two times that. Right? And by the way, this actually simplifies. Two, um, two fourths simplifies to one half because two is half of four. Right? So um, if we thought about, you know, if we were thinking about a square the way, the way I drew up here. So if you're thinking about a square here, you could think of a square broken up into fourths. You have one of them. And then you say, now multiply that by two. Well, now you get two of them at the end, right? Well, how many do I have of the total? Well, I have half of it, this whole bottom half, right? So it's bigger. But notice here, and the, the, the problem I did above with the one half, when you multiply a fraction by another fraction, you're actually getting smaller. This one eighth is a smaller portion of the whole, right? Remember this, we're talking about some portion of this whole square. Well, the one fourth was a bigger amount of that whole square. One eighth is a smaller amount. So a fraction multiplied by a fraction gets smaller. And um, why does it do that? Well, because you're saying you have a fraction already, a fourth of something, and then you're, you're multiplying it by a half. You're, you're saying take half of that. Here, you're multiplying by two. You're saying take two of them. So if we had a one fourth, right, and we're multiplying it by two, we're saying take two of them. Or if, um, here you're just taking the one fourth, and we're we're dividing it by two essentially, right? We're taking half of it, which is multiplying by half is the same thing as actually dividing by two. So um, that's sort of why that works. Not sort of that is why that that the math works like that. So just another uh, quick example, um, just to sort of remind ourselves. So what if we had a fifth? Maybe I'll do it in different colors. Get rid of the monotony here. So if we add a fifth and we multiply that by a sixth, what I'm saying here is I have something that's broken into fifths. I have one of them. And now I'm taking a sixth of the fifth. So then what is the resulting fraction going to be? Like how much is the resulting fraction going to be of the entire thing? Well, if we follow our rules, that's one times one over five times six. It ends up being one over 30. It looks like a terrible three, 30. So the resulting fraction is a 30th of the whole. So we see it's much smaller, right? A fifth is already fairly small. A sixth, a sixth of that fifth is very small. So it ends up being one 30th of the entire whole there. I'm not going to draw that out because that would take me forever and I probably wouldn't do a very good job of doing that. 
Okay, so that's how you do fraction multiplication, but I, I want to do one more video about you know having to do with multiplication that talks about some, some little tricks you can do which make it a lot simpler when you're dealing with like big numbers. So see you in the next video.